AC balance. Quite often considered a very, very confusing topic. Well, there are some fantastic videos out there, and there are a handful of them that really explain this in great detail, but there are some things that I think I can reiterate on, and maybe I can offer a better visual representation of exactly what's happening, and maybe how to set up your machine with AC balance correctly set, or at least to the preference that you like it at, based on the results. And that's what we're going to go over as part of the TIG Simple series today, only on the Fabrication Series. Alright, so in order to actually start this one off here, we're going to have to focus on two things here. The difference between DC electrode negative and the DC electrode positive side of the welding machine. Now most of it we're all welding on DC electrode negative, but what exactly does that mean? Well, let's look into the actual law of how DC current actually runs. Electricity travels from negative to positive, not positive to negative. It goes from negative to positive. So with that in mind, let's actually explain the difference between the electrode positive and the electrode negative, how it applies to a TIG welder. Check this out. Let's start with the Power TIG 255 EXT, just because I like it. That works. So we're getting close here, you can take a look at the left side is the negative terminal, the right side is the positive terminal when we connect our leads to it, so just for reference there. Now we're going to need our clamp. Now this is known as a work clamp, maybe a work lead, or an earth, or a ground. Then we're going to need the torch. Now the torch, this is very important to remember about this one. It holds the tungsten, it conducts the electricity, therefore the torch is the electrode. Not anything else, it's the electrode. Whatever it references, electro-negative, electro-positive, the torch is the electrode. Remember that. Next we'll bring in something to weld. This is also known as our work. And we're going to connect that to our clamp. Now we're going to send uh, one line over to the clamp, which we're going to send the positive side over, and then the negative side to the electrode or the torch. Now this is DC current electrode negative, or DCEN. Now since our current travels from negative to positive, it's going from the torch to the work. That's the direction that it's traveling. Now this is typically what we use to weld things like stainless steel, mild steel, chromoly, titanium, stuff like that, pretty much anything that isn't an alloy. So that is DC current electrode negative, or DCEN. Now we'll set it up on the machine just so you get another reference here. That is our uh, work side, goes on the positive, our torch end, or our electrode goes on the negative side. And of course I'll hook it all up here and I'll show you what it looks like underneath the hood. You get a nice pinpointed arc, good stability, keeps the tungsten nice and sharp. And we can just pinpoint it wherever we want, focus it wherever we want, and just make it happen. All on direct current electrode negative. This is typically what we use. Now let's flip this around. We're going to send our clamp, or our work lead, into the negative side, and we'll send our torch, or our electrode, into the positive side. This is known as DC electrode positive, or DCEP, sometimes called reverse polarity. So again, it travels from negative to positive, so we're going from the work to the torch. Now, you can't actually weld on this, and this animation here is just a representation of if you could, that's probably something about what it would look like. But, the cup gets ridiculously hot, the tungsten will melt and ball back, and you actually won't be able to get anywhere with it. So, I'll show you kind of what that looks like. We can't actually make a weld, because it takes, you know, just half a sniff on that pedal of amperage to, uh, to make that tungsten just explode like this. It's... It's really, really bad. <laughs> so again, everything gets ridiculously hot. It's impractical. We don't actually use it. There is a use for EP, or the positive side, and that's on aluminum. But this is essentially what happens. All of the current is going up into that tungsten. Instead of it being focused and coming out of it, it goes into it, which creates a lot of resistance and a lot of heat. That's why it melts. Now that we got the DC or the direct current side figured out, let's talk about what happens on the AC, or the alternating current side. Check this out. Now what alternating current does is actually in its name, it alternates, it oscillates, it switches from one side to the other in one cycle. So it goes from positive and then it flip flops and goes right back down into the negative side to complete one cycle. Now the number of positive to negative oscillations of the wave, or how many times it switches from positive to negative, however many times in one second it does that is the frequency. 
Now the frequency is typically measured in Hertz or HZ, which is what it's abbreviated. So if you have, say, 60 oscillations from positive to negative in one second, you have 60 Hertz. Same thing goes if you have like 412.2 or 50 or whatever. That number, how many times it oscillates from positive to negative is your frequency in Hertz. Now, once upon a time, the only thing we were ever able to work with on a TIG welder was a 60 Hz sine wave, which is what's shown here. That's exactly what came out of the wall. But waves have evolved over the years for the AC side. So aside from the sine wave, we typically, or most machines, have the square wave, which is available in typically two forms, which is the sharp square, which is shown here, or a soft square, which actually has kind of rounded corners on each one of those edges, making it a nice smooth transition. Some machines also have the triangle wave. Now, a triangle wave is a very tight pinpoint type of arc that doesn't build up a lot of heat. But let's actually switch over and talk about the square wave since that's most common. Now aluminum is kind of a fickle metal. It has an invisible oxide layer on it that melts somewhere around 3500 degrees Fahrenheit while the aluminum melts somewhere around 1500 degrees Fahrenheit. Now this is depending on who you talk to and what grade of metal it is. So let's bring in our torch here and we'll kind of review here. On the positive side, remember the electricity travels from negative to positive. So on the positive side, it's going from the work to the torch. And on the negative side, it's going from the torch to the work. Now where it applies to aluminum, this is actually very important because the positive side actually does something for us. It serves a function which we call cleaning. So as we fire it up, the positive side actually comes from within the metal and blasts the oxide layer up and out of the way. That way when it switches over to the negative side, the negative can fire down into it and penetrate into the metal. Now this happens rapidly. Now how rapid it does it is determined by the frequency. Now this is the fastest I could probably show it where it still makes sense. Remember it blasts up on the positive side to clean, it blasts down on the negative side to penetrate. Now if you look at it through the hood, this is pretty much what you're staring at as you're welding aluminum. And this bead is welded at 60 Hz, and I'm going a little bit slow here. But the topic of frequency and uh, you know the waves of aluminum that we usually run when welding it is a topic for a different episode in the TIG Simple series, and we'll definitely get into that of course. But this is pretty much what it looks like and why you need AC to weld aluminum. Alright, so we know about DC on the positive side, we know about DC on the negative side, and now we know a little bit about AC. So let's talk about AC balance. Now AC balance is the relationship of the positive side to the negative side on the AC wave, or the alternating current wave. Now how exactly that pertains to welding is exactly what we're going to cover right now. Check this out. So taking a look at this wave, we have what we call a balanced wave, which is 50% on the positive side and 50% on the negative side. So try and follow along. The result that it produces is this. This is what it looks like underneath the hood. It gives a bald and quivering type of tungsten, kind of a wandering arc, which results in less focus, less stability, and a wider weld puddle. It's not something we typically like to work with. We're able to refine that. And the way that we refine that is by taking that wave and adjusting the positive side slightly back. So we can actually say that we want less time spent on the positive side and more time spent on the negative side. So 30% cleaning on the top results in less balling of a tungsten, less heat, and 70% on the negative side results in a much uh, more pinpointed and stable arc. So let's throw up three different welds here. You can see one on the top, one in the middle, one on the bottom. And these, if you're to your untrained eye, are uh, three very different welds, and we'll actually go over and explain them. The top is way too much negative side, so that kind of produces like a, a puddle with lots of oxides in it. It kind of looks like a bowl of snot in a sausage casing. There's absolutely no cleaning action on it whatsoever. Now the 3070, which is a good starting point, we can see that this frosty etching zone around there is our cleaning side. Very good, very clean, nice, stable puddle. And our 5050 produces a very deep etching. You can see it gets uh, pretty severe down there at the bottom of it. Now, obviously we're going to weld somewhere around 3070, which is ideal. And most people actually have their own personal preference here, so let's kind of run over a little bit here. Now our 5050, remember sometimes you don't have the adjustment. This is like an old school machine of what it used to do. It would be equal cleaning and penetration, the tungsten would ball up, give you less stability, make it a wider puddle and a really deep etching zone. Now compare that to something like 3070, which is a good starting point, 30% positive, 70% negative, you get more penetration than you get cleaning. The tungsten stays a little more tapered, you get increased stability and focus, which is really fantastic. Now remember, the key word here is balance, and this is all based on preference. So start somewhere around 3070, and then maybe kind of tweak and refine it just a little bit. Every machine's different, every personal preference is different. 
Now this is just where it gets a wee bit confusing because some manufacturers display the wave and the adjustment on the positive side. Some manufacturers display the wave adjustment on the negative side. So which one do you have and how do you figure out and all the rest of that good stuff? Well, there is actually a very, very easy way. You can look it all up or you can just plug in the machine and do this. Check this out. Start by setting up your machine in electronegative, meaning your torch is on the negative side, your work lead is on the positive side, and then set your AC balance control to 70. Doesn't matter what you think it is, just set it to 70. Then step on the pedal. Now if you see the tungsten start balling up and violently reacting and starting to melt away with very little amperage on that pedal, your machine displays the positive side, so turn it back down to 30 and you'll be able to weld okay. Still confused? Well, you got a couple of options here. First and foremost, you can definitely sit down and take one of our TIG welding classes anytime that you feel it's convenient. All you have to do is go over to the fabricationseries.com slash classes website to book up a class anytime that you want and people are traveling from all over the world just to take the classes. It's a fantastic way to get trained in a big hurry and it's in Vegas. I mean, there's always something to do here even when you're not training for welding classes. So it's obviously a really good deal. Next, you can actually hit us up on the fabricationseries.com website. You can send me an email or anything like that get in contact with me. Very easy to do. You can also hit me up on Instagram at the.fabricator or facebook.com slash thefabricatorseries. I definitely try to get back to all messages and emails in a timely manner, and I'll definitely see if I can explain it in a way that you can understand it. But that about wraps it up for this episode on AC Balance. So I want to thank you guys for watching. As always, don't forget to subscribe to the Fabrication Series YouTube channel for more really awesome content, and I will see you guys on the next next episode.